Let's take a few moments to learn about how we can establish authentication parameters in the Postman utility for HTTP calls. We're looking here at the Postman interface. When I did my video on requests, you'll notice I skipped over a tab. Specifically, yeah, I skipped over the authorization tab. It's right here in between parameters and headers. I skipped over it on purpose because I feel like it deserves its own little talk. And here's how the authorization tab works. When I open it up, I can pull down a bunch of different types of authorization. I can indicate no authorization, API keys, bearer tokens, basic authentication. I'm going to grab actually a new request. I'm just going to add a new request to my collection here. And down here inside of my auth test, I will use a slightly different URL. Looking at my Postman Echo, we notice that there is an authentication method section over here. And let's grab the basic auth section. So here is a URL and endpoint that Postman offers that I can use to test basic authentication. That's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to paste that in here. And I'm going to set up my authorization. Now, basic authentication happens inside of a header. And if I wanted to, I could absolutely key in by hand the authorization header here, along with a value that said basic and then a space and then a base64 encoded version of the username and password. But that's a lot of work. I want to let Postman do the work for me. So I'm going to show you how we can use the tools that it offers. Over here under authorization, I'm going to pull down basic auth, since that is the authorization that I want to test. It asks for a username and a password. Looking back at the documentation, I can see my username is Postman and my password is password. Well, that's easy enough. I will type Postman and password. And it hides it for me, but if I want to show it, I could. I can click Save. And now when I send this request, we can see that I got a response of authenticated set to equal true. And if I look at the console for this request, notice here that there is a request header. It is authorization and it reads basic and then this encrypted, base64 rather encoded version of the username and password. So Postman was able to fill out that header for me in order to do basic authentication. But there's a pretty neat feature here. I, if I wanted to apply this same authentication to more URLs, well, I would have to keep typing this into a whole bunch of different requests underneath my folder, right? You probably noticed this first option, the default option, inherit auth from parent. In this particular case, the parent in question is the collection or the folder that this URL belongs to. So we're going to start to see some of the, the power of organizing your API requests into these folders. Instead of setting the authorization on this specific request, I can come here to my collection and click, right-click it and choose Edit. And there's an authorization section here. It looks exactly the same as the other one. So I can choose basic auth, type my information in there and say update and check out what's going to happen here. Now my get request, I can save it even though I don't have any authorization stored with it. When I send it, I still get authenticated equal to true because it inherited that details from the folder. Why is that great? Well, obviously I it can have multiple different URL endpoints, multiple different requests that I want to test inside of this folder. And instead of having to copy the username and password over and over and over for each one, I can just store that information with the, uh, with the uh, collection and then reuse it over and over and over. And that means that I only have to type it once. I only have to maintain it once. If I want to update it and try a different user, well, I just change it in one place. And every URL that inherits from the parent will use the collection URL. Now I can also still override it at the request level. If we look here back at my get, for example, if I Click a send here and look at the console. One of the things you'll notice that on this postman.com uh, forward slash get command is that authorization was still sent up. Now that's fine. It's not a big deal in this particular case, but you know, you may not want to send the authorization details to a URL that does not require authorization. Well, here down on my individual URL, I can actually choose no auth. I can override the choice from the collection header. And now when I run this particular request, no authorization will be selected. Or if this request is using API keys instead of basic authentication, I could use API key here. My auth test here will still inherit from the parent, whereas this one will override it with its own local choice. So that is how you set up authentication in Postman, and that's how you leverage the value or the power of a collection to save your authentication at a higher level and apply it to multiple requests if you need to at one time. Hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.